Hello, everyone. Today, we are in conversation with Nick Savaitz, Senior Director of Strategic Business Asia Pacific at Forcepoint, a global cybersecurity leader for user and data protection. Savaitz is an information security expert with over 20 years of experience and has presented at over 80 conferences and also contributed to many high profile panel discussions. Before joining Forcepoint, Savaitz spent 14 years at Semantic in various technology, sales, and leadership roles across Asia Pacific. Today, he'll talk about the importance of SASE and how Force Points Data First SASE benefits organizations of all scales and sizes. So without wasting any more time, let's get into a quick chat with Nick Savaitz. So hello, welcome, Nick. Uh, the first question that we'd like to know is, you know, what makes SASE important for businesses today? Well, I think it's first of all, it's a very good question. I think SASE is important to all organizations right now. Uh, the reason being is it is the architecture of today, and more importantly, it is the architecture of the future. I think this will be the driving architecture from both a network perspective and a security perspective uh, well into Horizon 1 and into Horizon 2. The way that we operate our networks, our applications, our systems, it's all changing. And SASE really provides us with both the network framework and the security framework and a methodology to be able to securely operate those applications now and into the future. Right. So, you know, a connected question, you know, what are the growth drivers of single vendor SASE today? Well, I think uh, the, the big drivers are something we've all lived through the last three years. And, you know, the pandemic happened. Um, our offices changed forever. In the old days, you had 80% of your people in an office and 20% of your people working remotely uh, at any point in time. Things changed. Uh, now we expect all employees to have the ability to work from home. Um, we now have uh, workforces that are far more distributed than they've ever been before. And that's really been driving a change in the way that we design our networks, the way we build our applications, and the way we give access to applications and data to people. I think that's been one of the core uh, drivers of the adoption uh, and use of, of SASE technologies. I think. Following that is the um, network modernization. We have a, a, our networks traditionally were connected, you know, multiple data centers and sites and whatnot, connected over dedicated private links, um, big adoption around technologies like SD-WAN. Uh, and that's been happening for some time, bringing that into the SASE fold where it's all managed under a single vendor or a single platform or a single console is critically important. And that leads me to my third point, and that is around the proliferation of tools and systems, uh, the complexity of operating many, many different security tools and many, many different networking uh, uh, technologies has made it very, very hard for organizations to adopt new things, uh, to make changes to existing environments. So driving uh, a single vendor or a single platform type approach where you can consolidate many, many different tools into one thing that you can manage and the ability to turn features on and off and add new and advanced capabilities. I think that's one of the big driving forces. So th those three things combined, I think they're really driving that sassy market and the growth in this space. Absolutely. You know, so uh, can you explain what does a successful data first deployment really looks like? Yeah, well, there's many answers to that. And depending on who you ask, you'll get you'll get very, very different uh, answers. For me, I think the way I would define it is that your users have the same level of protection wherever they are. So they get very high efficacious protection of their data, their systems, their connectivity, all of this. And it's universal no matter where they are, whether they're at home, whether they're in the office, uh, whether they're um, uh, working remotely, it doesn't matter. Um, the, I, the same level of high protection everywhere, uh, I, I think makes the mark of a successful project. And the second thing that I would say that I think makes a project su successful is not just adopting the SASE framework and technologies, but um, 
ensuring that you have the, the concepts of zero trust flowing throughout your uh, SASE deployment so that your user has that high level protection everywhere they go. And it is utilizing those concepts of zero trust around their network connectivity, around their access, around their data usage uh, and around their internet uh, experience and especially around the, their content as well. So that to me, that's what makes it successful. The fact that you've got the same level of protection everywhere um, and uh, that's the end user success. I think from an ad administrative success, the fact that you can uh, do it all in one place, that would be my measure of success. If you can get rid of the you know, 20 different consoles or different tools and consolidate into a single place where you're doing that. I think that is the second measure that I, I would utilize on, on the administrative side. Absolutely. I think same level of perfection is uh, essentially what it is all about. So, mm. uh, you know, um, First Point has been in this uh, business of SASE for quite long now. So how does uh, the company really differentiate itself when it comes to the SASE business? Yeah, well, look, um, this is a growing space. There's a lot of vendors, a lot of technologies, a lot of people want to get into the SASE space. Uh, you know, it's a, it, it's growing very rapidly for all those drivers that we spoke about before. And Forcepoint is an established player in the SASE space. Uh, we have uh, a way of differentiating ourselves that I think is quite unique to, compared to the rest of the industry. Uh, we have taken all of the components that we had previously had. Well, you know, we had our secure SD-WAN capability. We had our, 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 uh, our web-based uh, uh, protections and our advanced data protection where we're worldwide recognized for. And what we've done, I think, is really build a converged offering that sets itself apart based around the high level of data protection that it offers the users. So we've taken 20 years of data protection learning and have applied that into our SASE so that our customers, when they when they adopt the force point technology, they can get best in class data protection from day one. I think that's really important. The second thing that they get that's unique to force point, I think, is really our approach. You know, we have taken an approach that builds on a the modern architecture itself. So we don't just build the technology and try to solve the solve the problem. Modernize our uh, our approach as well. And what we've done in this space uh, is we operate our platform at, on a on a cloud native hyperscale basis. So we're enabling our customers to move to the cloud to adopt these um, cloud based distributed technologies. And our architecture is also distributed and hyperscale based. It allows our users to have the same level of protection everywhere they go uh, and have a very performant experience and, and is elastically grows and shrinks uh, uh, on, on a cloud basis. So we utilize the best of the cloud infrastructure in order to, to deliver these services. So our approach is, is very different. The third thing that I would say sets us apart is that we have taken our most advanced technologies, the zero trust technologies like remote browser isolation and uh, for a zero trust web browsing experience uh, and uh, our content disarm reconstruction technology for true zero trust content delivery to end users. We've taken these really advanced technologies that may have been out of reach for many customers and put them into a very consumable way in the offering, which means that customers who may not have had the ability to utilize these advanced technologies, all they need to do now is turn the capability on within the platform and it's there. And that leads me to my final differentiation. And that is we ask customers to adopt the SASE offering at their own pace. We don't want to try and force them to do everything at once. We're going to build a plan for each individual customer to say, what makes sense for you to do right now while setting you up for the future? Uh, and, and we have a, a really neat methodology for doing that and assisting customers with their prioritization on what they should tackle first. 
absolutely all right so you know the last question uh, nick for today is that you know what really are the key questions that you know enterprises need to ask when it comes to choosing a saas provider or a channel partner for that matter yeah and you know uh, i i think that it's very important for customers to ask their the the their vendors their partners you know what sort of protection am i getting for my users and does it change depending on where they are do i expect the same level of efficacy across all scenarios and across all workloads am i able to adopt at my own pace can i adopt one piece of your sassy platform today and then uh, uh adopt another piece later on without having to do any rework uh, of things that i that i have in place do you have presence in my region where are your data centers where is my data located you know because we operate in a hyperscale way we don't have those same sorts of considerations those customers really need to ask their vendors where their data is being stored how their those services are being delivered uh and then i think they they need to ask uh how how do you integrate into a broader ecosystem can you integrate your sassy the with my other technologies does it break some of the applications that i use a lot of the the underlying technologies may not be compatible with other pieces that are in the customer's ecosystem so understanding whether or not that the specific vendors sassy that they operate with um is interoperable with what they already have is extremely valuable and finally how can you help me get better compliance i think is another one um that is really important because some of the 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 technologies that are in in market today the customers may not be able to adopt um because it doesn't drive it, it doesn't drive compliance from their perspective with their regulatory authorities or uh perhaps what they the, they need to meet to their own market or their own customers so there's sort of the the questions that I would ask there's a there's a whole heap more uh but they would be my top one all right thank you so much nick for speaking to us today and uh, we wish you well for your sasa journey ahead thank you so thank much thank you very much <laughs>